Today we're going to be talking about the ten virgins, uh, the parable of the ten virgins, and we're going to start in verse uh, chapter 25 and verse 1. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us in you. But go ye, rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know ye not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Back up to verse 19, uh, 10, I can't see. And he went to buy. And while, they, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. The name of this message this morning is, Are You Prepared? Are you ready for the day Jesus comes back? Have you so prepared yourself that if he came back today, you would be ready? We have ten virgins here. We have five foolish and five wise. Every ten people who go to church every week, five will go home and do what they heard. Five will go home and not, not do what they heard. Right. See, if you're going to be ready and you're going to want God to use you, then you're going to have to be ready to do what he says. These foolish virgins, they was thoughtless and they was without forethought. And these wise virgins were sensible, intelligent, and prudent and diligent in the word of God. What are you doing each and every day of your life to prepare yourself for the coming of, of Jesus Christ? What are you doing every day? Do you go home every day and do what you hear in these services? Or do you just go home and just, you know, you just come to church once a week and that's all you ever do? Listen, over in the Amplified Version, uh, 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 version in verse 3, it says, When the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them. Listen, folks, it's interesting that the, uh, the Word of God brings out this word extra right here. Anybody that's going to be successful is always going to have to do extra. Anybody that's going to be successful is always going to have to go to extra mile. It is going to take us getting more serious in our walk with God and start doing what we learn and not just coming to church. It's not enough just to come to church every Sunday, folks. But we have to apply these truths to our lives today and we have to have a desire to seek out Jesus and we have to be determined that we're going to be prepared and we have to stay prepared in our service to the Lord this morning. See, uh, we're going to have to walk diligently to stay connected to God and to live out His purpose for our life. What are you saying, preacher? It does you no good to come in here and listen to what I preach. It does you no good to listen to the Word of God. It does you no good to read the Word of God if you're not going to obey what He's telling you to do. Listen to me this morning, folks. There was five foolish virgins and there was five wise virgins. The five foolish virgins took their lamp, and when they took their lamp, their lamps were full. And when y'all leave out of this sanctuary this morning, your lamp is going to be full. Listen to me this morning. But it said the five wise virgins took, took their lamp, filled their lamps up, plus took a flask of oil with them. So, it, so, so they, they tarried while the bridegroom came. They was waiting on Jesus Christ. They wanted to make sure that they didn't run out of anointing before Jesus Christ came. Listen to me this morning, folks. And, 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 the, and the thing about it is, a lot of us will go out of here with our lamps full this morning. But before we can get back here on Wednesday night, or before we can get back here on next Sunday, our lamp is going to be empty. And listen, folks, we got we to gotta prepare ourselves this morning to, 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 to keep our lamps full of oil at all times. You say, well, preacher, how do I fill up my lamp? Well, every time you come to church, you get another drop of oil in your flask. Every time you pay your tithes, you get another drop of oil in your flask. Every time you visit the sick, you get another drop of oil in your flask. Every time you minister to somebody or bring somebody to the Lord, you get extra oil in your flask. What are you doing to put extra oil in your flask this morning? Or are you doing anything? Are you really serving Jesus this morning? Or are you self-serving yourself this morning? 
Listen, Jesus Christ has, <laughs> has a plan for each and every life in here this morning. And he wants us to use he wants to use us to reach a lost and dying world this morning. But listen, if we're never doing nothing in the kingdom, if we're always just self-serving ourselves, and we're never doing nothing for anybody else, and we just think because we come to church once a week that that's gonna be enough. Let me tell y'all something this morning, folks. Your lamp is gonna be out when Jesus comes back. You're gonna be out of oil when the Lord comes back. You can't do what you what you you can't just do what you barely have to do to get by. It's going to take to, uh, doing extra this morning. When we do what we have to do to barely get by, in other words, we just show up on Sunday and we never do any extra, then when hard times hit, we won't have enough anointing in our tank to get our breakthrough. We won't have enough anointing in our tank to get what we need to get through our storm. We won't have enough anointing in our tank or enough oil in our lamp to get us through to the next... Uh, hallelujah. See, the Lord, just, just give me a revelation. You won't have enough oil in your lamp to light up that next dark spot to hit your life. That's right. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Praise God. See, we'll, see, what we'll be, we'll be like the five foolish version. And we're going to be left out on a lot of things that God wants to bless us with. We're going to be left out on a lot of things that God wants to, want to deliver us from. We're going to be left out on a lot of things that God is wanting to do in our life. And why, why are we being left out? Because we're like the five foolish versions. We never took enough oil to keep the lamp burning until the bridegroom came. Listen, the bridegroom's Terry, and he's been Terry for 2,000 years now. But let me give y'all a revelation this morning. Jesus is coming back. And listen, your lamp, your lamp better be burning when, when he comes back, or you're going to be left out. And then when you come to the door after you get some more oil, and you say, well, I'm going to go run home and read my Bible. I'm going to go witness to somebody so I can get some more oil. By the time you go knock on the door, the door is going to be shut, and he's going to say, I don't even know you, but why? Because, see, you weren't diligent in your walk with God. You weren't preparing yourself for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Only thing you was doing was self-serving yourself. Only thing you was doing was coming to church once a week. Only thing you was doing was saying, well, I went to church this week, so my life must be all right. Your life is out of order this morning. Your life is flipped upside down this morning. Your life is torn apart this morning. There's so much confusion going on in your heart this morning that you don't even know whether you're coming or going this morning, and it's all because your lamp is in this morning folks. See you come here this morning and you're going to get your lamp full this morning but before you can get back to the house of God your lamp's going to be empty. That's why it's so important that we pay attention to our walk with God. That's why it's so important that we make sure that we read this Bible every day of our life. That's why it's so important that we make sure we're doing service to uh, for Jesus Christ every day in our life. See this ain't a self-serving gospel this morning. Religion is self-serving. That's all it ever does is self-serve. But we're talking about having a relationship with Jesus Christ we're talking about working for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're talking about, hallelujah, getting enough oil in our lamp to get us through our storms. Getting enough oil in our lamp to get us through our dark spots. Getting enough oil in our lamp, hallelujah, to get us through the hard situations in our lamp. And listen, if you got enough oil in your lamp, the next time that dark spot tries to surround you, only thing you got to do is cut your lamp up. Only thing you got to do is turn that thing up a little bit and say, that, hallelujah. It's going to overtake that darkness. But don't get caught, hallelujah, trying to turn that lamp up. And don't get caught out of oil. Because when you do that, guess what? That darkness is going to surround you. And it's going to water you. And it's going to take you to the bottom. And it's going to discourage you. And it's going to depress you. And it's going to defeat your life totally. That's right. Amen. But listen, we got a chance this morning, folks. We're learning something this morning. Amen. Somebody say, I don't learn it. We learn and we got to keep our lamp full this morning, folks. Listen to me. What? See, see we, can't, we can't wait till our lamps run out. Say I'm like one of the foolish ones. Brother Chuck's one of the wise ones. Brother Mark's one of the wise ones. Tracy's one of the wise ones. Mike's one of the wise ones. My lamp runs out. I keep it up. Where's that scripture at the Bible, man? I'm, I'm in trouble. See, i got to have oil in my own lamp. I got hollow. I see on the whole thing. Listen to me this morning. I got to know what. Hey! I got to know what the word says in my own lamp this morning. I can't wait till I get in trouble and then have to run up to somebody and say, How do I fix this in my life? Where, where, where in the Bible does this address this? Or where in the Bible does it address that? Why don't God speak to me like He speaks to you? Why is, my, why is your life at peace and you seem happy all the time? It's because that person has been preparing themselves in the Word of God. Their that person has been preparing themselves for the second coming of Jesus Christ and they got oil in their lamps and every time 
darkness tries to come around them, only thing they got to do is cut their lamp up a little bit. Listen to me this morning, folks. People who don't do their part, when they get in trouble, they want to run to somebody else to fix their mess. Folks, you have to start doing the word instead of just hearing the word. Over in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. And see, most of us, I ain't going to say that. I'm going to say a lot of people, they go they to church every week. The only thing they ever do is hear the word of God. They never do the word of God. They just hear the word of God. It's good that we hear the Word of God, but if you never do the Word of God, what's the use of even coming to hear the Word of God? Come on, somebody. I'm trying to get y'all somewhere this morning. It's time that we put our... It's just like if we sat in our car, and it's a fire speed, and we got that thing in neutral. You can give it all the gas you want to give it. Give it. But it ain't going nowhere. It's just like that's the same place that somebody... That's the same thing as somebody just hears the Word. But if you endure the word, you throw that thing in gear, and you get to where you want to go. You get to the destination God wants you to be at. But see, until you learn to put that thing in gear, you're just hearing the word. You're not doing the word. But when you become a doer of the word, God's going to get you to the destination he wants to get you to. Whatever your deliverance you need, and you put that thing in gear, and he's going to bring you to that deliverance. Whatever you need to be set free from, you put that thing in gear, and he's going to bring you over here where you can be set free. And see, he's going to put all that your life. And see, when you need that deliverance in your life, you just cut that light up and you can see your way and you can get out of your dog spot. Let me give you another example. Some people in here heard this and some people ain't heard this. But I used to go to the gym a lot before I went through whatever I went through. Before I got healed. Amen. 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 But see, I used to go to the gym a lot. I remember one morning, I was, it, was, it was dusk outside. It wasn't dark. It wasn't light. But I was in my office putting on my gym shorts, and they had a knot in them. And I couldn't get that knot out because it just wasn't quite light enough. I couldn't get that knot out. But I reached over and flipped on that light, and I got that knot out just immediately. And it's the same thing in our life, folks. When our when our lamps don't have enough oil in them this morning. See, we can't see, to, we can't see to get on the path that we need to get on. We can't see what path God is going to take us on. We can't see because we're in darkness. And we can't see uh, the light around us in order to get out of the knot that we have in our life. And listen, folks, God is wanting to put light in our life this morning. But see, we got to make sure that we're plugged into His, to His will this morning. If all we ever do is to hear, we're going to be like the five foolish virgins. And when trouble comes, uh, when trouble hits us, we won't have enough anointing to get out of anything. See, we'll be out of oil, folks. We'll be stuck in darkness, folks. We'll go knock on the door and He'll say, I don't even know who you are. Why? Because, see, you, you spent your whole life self-serving yourself. Jesus is saying, I have got my will for your life. I got a plan for your life. Engage into my plan in your life. In other words, get into my service. See, being a Christian, folks, is a, is a verb. It's not a noun. It's a verb. It's an action word. Being a Christian it means working for Jesus Christ. Being a Christian means getting engaged in, in, in this Bible. Getting engaged in God's plan for our, for our lives. That's what being a Christian is. But most of us think, well, I've been saved and that's all there is to it. Folks, that's just the beginning of it. It don't even start until you get saved. Hallelujah. Listen, folks. So we don't need more oil in our life. But see, these five foolish persons, they waited too long and they were not prepared. See, folks, we have to prepare ourselves every day behind closed doors in order to live out God's will for my life. Do you know how many hours I spent behind closed doors? Do you know how many times I didn't get to go to the lake or I could have went if I wanted to? Do you know how many times I didn't get to go to the Carolina Panthers football game? Do you know how many times I didn't get to go down to the Charlotte Motor Speedway to watch a race because I chose to get behind that closed door and prepare myself for the Word of God instead of get out here and get, uh, and get what the world's attracting me to. Amen. Now, go, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Listen, now there's nothing wrong with going to a football game, and there's nothing wrong with going to a race. But see, you got you can you got to get you a balance in there. See, that, see, like I said, I spent many hours behind closed doors in order to be standing up here talking this morning. 
If I wouldn't have put my time in the preparation and in the, the, the knowing who God was and in my service for Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be up here this morning. I couldn't figure out when God called me to preach in 1994, I couldn't figure out why it was 2009 before I ever got to preach. I know now. I had to prepare myself. I couldn't just get saved and jump up here and start preaching. Well, I could, but I made it. I'd be like one of them five foolish versions. I'd have been halfway through my message and run out of oil. <laughs> Praise God. Hey. Listen to me, folks. See, see we, we, we hear people say all the time, well, when I get older, I'm going to get more serious with God. Well, I'm too young. When I get older, I'm going to get saved. When I get older, I'm going to start serving God. Well, some folks, you might not have that long. Listen, you might not wake up in the morning. It's time that we got diligent in our walk with God. Don't find yourself like the five foolish virgins that didn't prepare themselves and run out of oil before they, need, before they needed it. See, it doesn't matter what else is going on in your life, folks. You've got to understand preparation is the key to living a successful Christian life. Let me give you an example. I'm going to make this live this morning. Amen. We prepare ourselves every day for our job. As a matter of fact, you get up early to make sure you get up to work on time because you don't want to be to work on the late. But see, you act like coming to church, you're doing God a favor. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't go to work one, uh, one day, then miss the next day, and then go the next day, then miss the next day. Then why you come to church one Sunday and miss the next Sunday? Why, why, why do you show up to church late? You don't show up to the job, you do your job late. Listen to me this morning. What this telling me is, that, that your job is more important than God's Word. Wow. Your job, your, your, your personal life, your personal agenda, your self-serving self, your religious self is more important than what God's trying to do in your life. Listen, you make sure that you're up and you're at work every day. Why? Because you're going to get fired if you don't go to work. Thank God Jesus don't fire people. Amen. 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 So we're all being on the line this morning. Amen. Amen. Listen to me this morning. See, you're going to have to discipline yourself and prepare yourself when no one else is watching. Not just when we come to church. It's easy to come to church and say, Hallelujah, brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is good. But what about when you are by yourself? Yeah. What about when you're behind closed doors when ain't nobody watching? I don't know about y'all, but I can speak for myself. I had some of the best worship services by myself that I've ever been to in my life. Yeah. Why? Because, see, I got up early in the morning, and I sought the Lord, and He heard my cry. Hallelujah. And, huh, and He come and visited me up in my study, and He visited me, and see, he, he, me and Him dealt with some things that I couldn't deal with here in the church. I couldn't even, I, it would have never happened in the church. But see, through my, through my diligent time, knowing that I had to prepare myself, see, God delivered me from some things that I could have never got delivered from. See, God, hallelujah. And see, and that's when, that's when he kept putting more oil in my lamp. When I get up early in the morning. And I make sure that I give God his time before I give anybody else their time. Let me, let me go a step further here. This is good right here. Say, Lord, just give me this. I used to get up every morning. And I used to make sure I read three, a, book, a, a chapter out of uh, three different books. And if I felt like if I didn't read a chapter out of three different books, I wasn't pleasing God. That's religion, folks. Religion. Listen to me this morning. God is wanting you to come to Him every morning and just seek His presence and get before the Lord. And get, get one scripture. Get yes. two scriptures. Yes. Get three scriptures. But don't make, your, don't make your service to God legalistic. Don't make your service to God like, well, I got to do A, B, C, D, E, and F, or God's not going to be pleased with me. What God wants you to do this morning, God wants you to come to Him and say, Lord, I need some oil in my lamp. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, I need you to fill my lamp up so I'll have light, so, I can, so I'll know what to do. That's what God's asking us to do this morning, folks. Amen. I used to go out and brag, I remember, before I really got saved. I was saved, I hadn't gotten delivered. I used to go out and brag. Read my three chapters this morning. You know, I thought I was something. And the only thing I was doing was being duped the whole time. Because, see, I was in religion. I wasn't in relationship with Jesus Christ. I was being religious. And see, if, I, if God, the day he called me to preach in 19, actually 1990, 
If he would have put me in the pulpit right then, I would have been a religious teacher. I would have been a religious preacher. See, I would have been up here teaching y'all the, the, the do's and don'ts. Instead of teaching y'all the love and the grace. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 We need the love and the grace. We don't need to prove y'all. I don't need to sit here and beat y'all up every time. I'm, I'm way off my message. Praise God. Right. Hey, I don't, I don't need to sit here and beat y'all up every time y'all walk in the door. Y'all know how bad y'all are? Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got to tell y'all how bad y'all are. Y'all already know how bad y'all are. But see, what I want to do is tell y'all that in spite of where y'all are in life, God loves you right where you are. That's what grace is right there, folks. It's free. Remember the message I preached a couple weeks ago about grace being free? Yes. It's, it's a free gift, folks. And he gives it, he gives it to, to everybody that comes to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, amen. Praise God. See, what do you do in your private time? What do you do in your spare time? Do you spend time with God? Or would you rather sit around watching I Love Lucy? Do you spend time with God? Or you sit around watching cartoons? Do you spend time with God? Or you just sit there in the living room and look just plum dumb? And don't do nothing. Listen, listen, folks. Listen, listen. God is what God is wanting us, in order for us to prepare our lamps and to get our lamps full, God is wanting us to pick up his power. We get a little bit extra oil to pick up this Bible. Now, I ain't making this legalistic. I'm telling you what to do to get oil in your lamp. Listen, listen to me. Or, or maybe, maybe, maybe when I'm sitting there in my spare time and I ain't got nothing to do, I'll cut on a preaching program. I'm getting a little bit more oil in my lamp. Or maybe I'll call a brother or sister in the Lord and encourage them in Jesus Christ. Because you don't know what your brother or sister's going through this morning, folks. You don't know how, what kind of shape they in this morning. But see, when you call that brother or sister the Lord, you get more oil in your lamp. But when you just sit there in that living room looking stupid, looking dumb, I don't, I shouldn't have said it that way. But, but, but listen to me. I'm just trying to teach you how to get oil in your lamp this morning, folks. But when you just sit there in your living room and you ain't doing nothing and you're just wasting time and you got a chance to pick up the Bible and read the Bible, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What about when you go to the doctor's office and there's a stack of magazines right there and there's a Bible there out there? What do you pick up and read? Wow. See, you'd rather know what they're doing in Hollywood than you than you than you would do what they're doing in the kingdom. I'm trying to teach you how to get oil in your lamp this morning, folks. Amen. Listen to me this morning, folks. See, we got choices every day that we can choose what we're going to do. <coughs> let me let me tell you what the devil tell you. There you are sitting in the waiting room. Well, if I pick up that Bible, people are going to think I'm crazy. People, people gonna think people gonna look at me, you know, in, in a weird way. That's why you should. That's why you should all the more pick it up, because you don't know who's gonna say. See you reading that Bible, and say, "Hey man, I need to talk to you." That's right. I got a problem in my life. Right. I want to know if you can help me. And I said, "I can't help you, but Jesus can." Yeah. And see, I can direct them to Jesus Christ. And see, I got a chance to win a soul by just picking up a Bible in the doctor's office. But most of us, I'm being honest, we ain't concerned about our lamp right now because Jesus ain't cracked the clouds yet. But don't get caught with your lamp out of oil when he cracks the cloud. That's right. Don't get caught with not enough anointment the next time you have a problem in your marriage or you have a problem in your personal life. Don't get caught without enough anointing the next time uh, 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 your child's running wild or your child's acting out. Make sure you've got enough anointing in your, in, your, in your lamp to cut that light up so you can see what to do when these troubles come. Hey, man, I like this, right? I don't know about y'all, but I like this. See, you can't just be faithful with God when someone's watching. You can't just be super Christian when you come to church on Sunday morning. And you live like hell all week long. Cussing everybody out. Yeah. Talking down everybody. Right. Judging everybody. Right. I mean, just acting a fool. Cussing your wife out. Uh, treat, uh, cut, uh, hollering at your husband. Uh, you old stupid thing. You know, da, 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 da. you know, and he's so nervous. He don't even know what to do. There you go. See, when you, took, when you took time to prepare yourself in your personal life, you don't have to worry about when hard times hit. You don't have to worry about when trouble shows up and you don't have to worry about the day that Jesus is going to come back. Because, see, you prepared yourself. When you know you've been diligent in your preparation time, 
You don't have to worry about running out of oil when the bridegroom shows up. Say so you'll have plenty. You you oh praise God. You'll have plenty of scriptures in your tank. You'll have plenty of scriptures in your heart. You'll have plenty of oil in your lamp for whatever comes your way. You say to yourself, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I mean, they're just covering me up. I'm not making enough money to pay my bills. But see, when you got oil in your lamp, Philippians 4.19 is going to surface. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm going to self-supply all my needs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Maybe you've been sick for a long time. And maybe you're just tired of being sick. When you got enough oil in your lamp, Isaiah 53 is going to rise up in your heart. By his stripes, I'm healed. Listen to me. When you got enough oil in your tank and your child's out here running wild and they acting a fool, see that it's going to rise up in your heart, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he won't depart from it. So what I'm saying is, folks, if you keep some oil in your lamp for whatever situation comes your way, you're going to be able to cut the light up when you need it. Hallelujah, listen to me. See, I'm not worried about the day Jesus goes back. See, a lot of people just sit around and worry all the time. And see, Jesus has given us his word right here for any situation that we have in our life. Amen. But we want to watch Dr. Phil. <laughs> we want to know what Dr. Phil says how to fix it. I ain't putting Dr. Phil down. He's pretty good. But listen to me. But he ain't Jesus. There's some things in our life we got to go to the source. Not a resource, but the source. In order to get what we need, in order to get the oil in our lamp, in order to get us out of our dark spot. Yeah. See, we have to prepare ourselves in the Word of God. See, is that, just think right now, if He was to come today, and if he wants to come today, that'd be fine with me. But if not, I'm content waiting on him because, see, I know that I've properly prepared myself. Right. I know that when trouble shows up, hallelujah, see, that, see and, and I promise you, troubles are going to show up. But when, I didn't say if they show up, I said when they show up. See, I, I took the time to prepare myself. I took the time to know what the scripture says. I took, I took the time to build up my faith that when they do show up, I'm caught in aim and I'm ready for any situation that comes my way. Good, good. Amen. Because why is that? Because, see, I got some oil in my lamp. Here comes a storm. Peace be still. Here comes a, here comes a relationship problem. Calm down. Here comes an addiction trying to get on you. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. See, you've got power this morning, folks. You've got power this morning. But you've got to have oil in your lamp. You can't get caught without no oil in your lamp. You can't just come to church once a week and think that's going to be enough. You've got to start serving God every day of your life. See, if you stay prepared, you don't, you don't have to worry about the day He's coming back. And it, and, and it don't matter because, see, you, 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 you have lived your life preparing your life. See, you should live every day like the day is a day. But most of us, a lot of us, ain't even serious about Him coming back because we might not believe it or 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 or. or we ain't prepared ourselves. Because if you really believe that Jesus was coming back, y'all hear this right here. If you really believe that Jesus was coming back, you spend a lot of time preparing yourself in this word. You spend, but see, most of us think it's just a story. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Uh, that's why you need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See, there's a lot of saved people walking around without the Holy Ghost. And see, they're just walking around with a form of godliness, but they have no power in their life. Everything that comes their way controls them. Wow. That's because they ain't got no oil. That's, that's because when these, when these problems come their way, they try to cut their lamp up and they ain't nothing in there to light, light the way. Listen to me this morning, folks. I'm going to go ahead and close this message. i got a lot more on this message right here. But listen to me this morning, folks. You've got, mm, you've got to have oil in your lamp. Let me go to one scripture here. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. It says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. It says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It says, You're the light of the world. But how are you going to light the world if you ain't got no oil in it? 
Are you going to be like the five foolish virgins that got locked out? Or are you going to be like the five wise virgins that got in at one time? And see, if you're wise in the Word of God, and you're being diligent in the Word of God, and you're preparing yourself in the Word of God like you're supposed to, it don't matter when He comes back. Because you're going to have enough oil. If it's a long time, you're going to have enough oil. If it's a short time, you're going to have enough oil. But if you ain't preparing yourself in the Word of God properly every day of your life, if it's a long time, if He lingers for a while longer, you're going to be out of oil before He comes back. And then you're going to come to me and say, Preacher, let me get a little bit of your oil. And I'm going to do like they said. And they're going to say, No, nah, go to the merchant and buy you some. I ain't giving up my oil. Because I ain't enough for both of us. I, I, I prepared myself. And I got enough oil for me, for my lamp. I ain't got enough oil to share with you. So go buy you some. And see, while you're going to buy, we're all going to go into the, to the marriage feast. We all went into we, we, the bridegroom comes and say we're going to light, light his way. We're going to be able to turn up our wicks and light the pathway for the bridegroom as he comes down the path. Wow. But those, hallelujah. <laughs> those, without no, those, those without no oil, they're they going to have to run somewhere. And see, while, while, while I've been diligent and been preparing myself while I'm on this side, I'm going to be ready for the bridegroom when he comes. So let me ask you a question. What are you doing in your personal life? Y'all come on. What are you doing in your personal life to put more oil in your lamp? What are you doing in your personal life to make sure you're going to have enough oil to keep the light burning when darkness hits your life? What are you going to do in your life to make sure you got enough oil to turn your lamp up when your children's out here running wild? What are you going to do to make sure you've got enough oil in your lamp when something drastic happens in your family? Listen, folks, we got to start preparing ourselves today. Today. Right now, today, this should be a brand new, fresh start. Right now, today. And from now on, from here on out, we should start. We should start preparing ourselves every day. So when the bridegroom comes back, we will have enough oil in our lamp. When darkness hits our life, we will have enough oil in our lamp. When our husband and our wife starts acting up, we're going to have enough oil in our lamp. When our bills overpile us, we're going to have enough oil in our lamp. When sickness hits our body, we're going to have enough oil in our lamp. See, folks, when your lamp is full, you're always going to have enough light to get out of your problem. Amen? Amen.